Well, a lot of people have been asking me lately, and actually for quite some time now, what I've been doing, if anything. Well, you know, I don't know. I think everybody should know me by now. I'm not going to stop working. So we do have a project going on, and this is it right here in front of us. So we started this project as a part-time project quite a while ago. It belongs to a very good friend of mine, and uh, he and I have been working on it together for a couple of years, really. And, uh, you know, first off, I'd kind of like to tell you a little story about meeting my friend, Ken Boyle. He owns a little 37-foot Alden sloop that's moored in the West Passage of Jamestown. And I met him a number of years ago. It needed a few planks put in it. And Ken and I got together and put the planks in and became friends. And uh, then actually Ken did a little bit of work for me uh, on a project that I had going on in Wickford. So we know each other pretty well. And uh, we found out that Ken wanted to build a schooner. So we looked at a number of different designs and, uh, you know, I don't know, I didn't care for stasel schooners and then he had thoughts of building a Malabar schooner, an olden Malabar, but uh, what we decided to do was pick this design right here. This is a 270 series Alden schooner designed in like 1928 and uh, it's 43 feet on deck and uh, it's, it's quite a sizable boat. We've got it in a fairly small shop here where we're working on it, but uh, you know, I just wanted to talk to you about it. And first of all, what I want to do is just give you like a little bit of an overview of what's been done. It's kind of too bad that we didn't get to doing videography on this project quite some time ago, but it's come to this point and now we're going to try to cover what we've done and then get involved in, in uh, you know, watching the work go on, you know, as it goes on on the boat. So, you know, first thing I want to do is say that, uh, uh, in the procedure that we built the boat is kind of what I'm going to talk about the same way we built the boat The first thing that went into the boat was actually, you know, the lofting of the boat and we lofted the boat and picked up all the sections and we made all the molds and set those aside and then the next thing we wanted to do was bring in the keel and uh, we got a terrific timber out of Connecticut from uh, New England Naval Timbers and uh, it's terrific because it's got the annual rings the way we want it to be. Just everything about that timber is exactly what we wanted, free of the heart and different things. And I'm going to talk a lot more about that keel a little bit later on, but uh, I want to also mention to you the stem and forefoot. It's been laminated in one piece with half-inch oak laminates. You know, that's something that's not new to me. I've laminated many, many stems and had very, very good luck with it. You know, some people might say that that could come apart on its laminate lines or whatever else, but uh, we know that's not going to happen. And, uh, you know, then, uh, so what we did was we set the keel, we set the stem and the stern post and horn timber, which I'm going to show you a little bit later. And then we set the molds on top of the keel and we braced them off to the wall in the building from one side because that was the most stable thing that we could do. We didn't want any stability or any braces coming down to the floor or anything like that because the shop was a little bit too small for that kind of stuff. So, you know, we've done it that way and it, it's really worked out good. The molds are just really made out of lumber yard stock. And they're kind of nice because they were progressive bevel sawn when we, when we sawed them out. So we didn't have to bevel them afterwards. So like I say, it's, it's just lumberyard stock with some plywood gussets and different things on it. Very simply done. And uh, we set those up on top of the keel. And then we put rib bands around the molds. And then we bent the framing into the rib bands. Now, the framing in this boat is plastic, you know. And a lot of people really... It's, it's, not, it's not something that everybody's used to, but this stuff here I've been using for quite some time. This is uh, UHMW, which is ultra high molecular weight. It's a, it's a polyethylene. And uh, I framed many, many boats with it and had nothing but good luck. And uh, so we decided we would use it in this boat right here because uh, it'll outlast oak by far and it's impossible to break it. I'm gonna go into the attributes and things of all of that plastic later on. And then the other things I wanted to show you while I'm sitting right here is, uh, we also made fiberglass floor timbers for this boat, which probably hasn't been done too often. This is a plate style fiberglass floor timber, and it's got a tang on the bottom that sits right on top of the stem. In this case, this is a forward one from quite a ways up forward. And uh, it's also got a little bit of an angle on the, ears of it here that matches the uh, bevel of the frame. You know, it's almost a half an inch thick 
fiberglass with uh, epoxy resin. This thing's pretty indestructible. And I'm going to go into the attributes of this a little bit later on. We're going to do a video really centered around the floor timbers, one centered around the frame, and, you know, one, you know, centered around the molds and how we pick them up off the loft floor and different things like that, you know, and just all kinds of different things uh, that we're going to do. Uh, most of it's really trying to catch up on what's already been done, you know. The other thing I could show you is another floor timber here. This is a, another floor timber that goes under the mast step. You know, it's a strap style floor timber. It sits on top of the plastic frame and, and uh, these other floor timbers sit alongside the, uh, the plastic frame. And so a couple different ones. We would design these because there's a mast step going in here at the foremast and uh, we want it to be nice and low. Uh, originally, they had iron floor timbers in this in the boat that I've seen that was exactly the same boat as this. Whether or not they've been done with bronze or different things, I'm not sure, but the one I know of had iron in it. And we don't want iron in the boat and we didn't really want bronze. And I'm gonna tell you all kinds of reasons why we didn't. And uh, like I say, the attributes of this fiberglass floor timbers. And uh, then the other thing about this boat is is that it's gonna be double planked with Philippine mahogany. We've already started planking it. The first layer of planking is strip planking. So they're, they're, they're cut parallel, you know, and placed on the boat. And uh, you have to start at the right uh, position in the bottom so they end up parallel or congruent with the shear, you know, uh, or equidistant. This is equidistant from the shear, which is not the way you would normally line a boat off a of Carvel planking, but the idea is, is that we're going to plank over this layer of planking with a layer of Carvel planking, and, and it'll be on, on there on a little bit different angle, so it'll be slightly biased to this layer. And of course, this is all glued up. All the planking is going to be glued together. There isn't any spaces, right? And I've actually developed a new system for cutting the progressive, uh, cutting strip planking to progressive bevel, because even though it's a narrow plank like that, when you're going around a curve, with 90 degree edges, you're gonna end up with a big fat glue line either on the inside or the outside. So we didn't want that, you know, so what we decided to do was come up with a whole new system, you know, of cutting the, uh, of cutting the bevels and Ken and I, I mean, I had the idea in my head right along and I've had it for years, but I've never had the opportunity to use it. And then Ken and I just kind of perfected it and set up the machine so that it would actually work. And then we turned it into a reality. So, you know, it's been a, uh, really kind of a picnic plank in it because uh, it comes out really nice and uh, you know it uh, it's the way to go this is not something new to me either you know I built the hull uh, for freedom it's a hundred and a four foot trumpy power yacht that we built uh, it, it really wasn't a restoration it was a build a brand new build we had the original boat there but uh, uh, we wanted that boat to last, and we put laminated framing in it, uh, oak laminated framing, and we strip planked it exactly like this with fur, and then Carvel planked over the strip plank, and, and believe me, that thing is holding up really, really nice. We expect this boat to not soak up water. We want it to, uh, you know, to be sealed up on the inside. It's actually going to, it has a layer of epoxy between the two layers of plank, and the next layer is going to be glued right on there. And... Uh, you know, really, what we're doing here is trying to, trying to eliminate the boat's ability or tendency to twist and different things without adding diagonal strapping into the frames or anything like that. All that strength, that contortion, is going to be transferred into the planking layers, actually, and uh, the planking layers are not going to be allowed to move or slide on each other or do anything that uh, traditional planking jobs would, would have happen. So, you know, we've been trying really hard in order to come up with these new ideas. And uh, at this point, you know, I mean, I build wooden boats and uh, this is a wooden boat, but it has, uh, I guess you would call it a composite construction possibly because it's got these different things in it. And, uh, you know, like I say, uh, they're not really experimental at this point. These things are, are things that I've proven to be uh, good things in the past, and we're incorporating them in this design. You know, I hope everybody enjoys it. Our intention is to, uh, you know, is to produce a, a series of videos on the build of this boat. And, uh, you know, I think it's, uh, it's certainly a subject 
or a, a subject that I want to be involved in the building of it. So it's real attractive to me. I can, I can imagine it being attractive to other people. You know, we're receptive to, uh, you know, looking at other jobs, other build jobs, myself and Ken as a, as a partnership, actually. And uh, actually, I have some small boats to build right now. But uh, we put, like I say, still part-time effort into this. And uh, it's coming along pretty nicely.